and it looks like everything is ready to go. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Jeff. Thank you very much, Shelley. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, for joining us today. Um, as you can see, this is the mobile clients and retail server session. Um, so make sure that you're you're in the right spot. Um, and here we're going to talk about um, some of the exciting stuff that we're doing um, with various uh, various devices um, and kind of different architecture and uh, deployment options um, that we're looking forward in the towards the in the next generation. Uh, before we get started, though, um, there's kind of the the standard disclaimer. Um, kind of you know the drill here, uh, but basically. Um, you know, the part I want to stress is that this is pre-release. Um, and it's in, in fact, what you're seeing is pre-pre-release. Um, they're basically, you know, just the current build, um, not necessarily anything that's ready to go out even for a CTP or a TAP or beta. So it's pre-pre-release. Um, so what you're seeing is definitely not final. Uh, so it won't look polished. Uh, it won't necessarily work properly. Uh, and, um, and you know, there could be some maybe performance issues. Uh, so, um, you know, all of those kind of disclaimers uh, um, aside, um, you know, it is working code, uh, and, and that's a good thing to see. Uh, so we'll, and we'll actually get into to real demos and not PowerPoint click-throughs. Uh, the other important part here is that, you know, this is all confidential. Um, so um, anything that you see here um, cannot be shared outside your organization. Um, so what we do want to cover today, um, so we'll kind of we'll go over what our you know what our goals are, um, not only of this session, but um, but for this for this work that we're doing, uh, for these scenarios that we're enabling. Um, Yabin will talk about the design and the architecture, um, both of the the server aspect and the client aspect, uh, and then we'll talk about you know kind of what's what's in scope for this release versus beyond, uh, and I put targeted there um, because you know we're 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 part of the way through the development cycle for this release. We have a good idea for what we can fit within this release, but obviously um, things can change. So this is our targeted scope for this release. And obviously, um, you know, another disclaimer is that you know not everything that we plan to make it in always makes it in. And in some cases, things um, you know come in late that we didn't expect to make it in. Um, so that you know, it's by no means is it, is it the final scope. Uh, and then very specifically, we'll talk about what we've done for CTP one. Um, so the, the the very basic scenarios that we've enabled so far that you'll be able to to try out, play with, test, and provide feedback on um, within with the upcoming uh, CTP that that's coming out, um, and then finally the demo. Um, so I'll be able to go through and show you some of these next gen clients uh, in action. Um, when we start to talk about goals, uh, it's important to throw up this slide again um, that everyone has probably seen many many times. Uh, it's actually kind of an old slide, and um, the 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 significance of that is that this is what we laid out as our vision a number of years ago, three, at least three years ago, uh, and this slide still rings true, and we keep marching towards this vision. Uh, so, you know, maybe when the vision was first prevent, uh, presented three years ago, um, you know, you, you might not be able to check very many of these boxes on this vision, but with each release, uh, we improve each of these, and we we fill it out more and that you know we now have um you know with our initial release we didn't have an online store and now we have online e-commerce um uh, we didn't have mobility before and now with this release we're adding mobility uh, we can we continue to improve all of the functionality and experiences within the stores as well as within headquarters um so this this the important point here is that you know it's a good vision and the vision hasn't changed and and we're still moving towards this vision of, of omni-channel retail Um, so goals for for kind of the mobility or the next gen client aspects um, are, are are basically laid out here. Uh, the key points to this um, is that it's for the enterprise and for consumer is is what our our overall goals are. Um, so we talk about um, you know our customers and our customers' customers. Uh, so terms that we'll use internally that that will sneak out in presentations every now and then are kind of the C1 and the C2. Uh, so C1 would be our customer, or the retailer in that case, and C2 would be the consumer, um, or the you know the retailer's customer. Um, so I'll try to use the terms retailer and consumer, but every now and then we might slip out and say C1 and C2. Um, so that's kind of our abbreviation for retailer and consumer. Uh, but our overall goals here and our overall vision is that we don't develop um, 
you know, apps and solutions and enable scenarios only for the retailer, but for the consumer as well. And then all of the interesting things in between that can happen uh, when you have these devices and these apps um, kind of running all on the same system, accessing the same data. Um, and, you know, we've got, we've got ideas uh, of where we can go with this in the future. Um, obviously, um, doesn't have to be within the store. Um, so, you know, with, with things moving to the cloud, um, you don't necessarily have to have access um, to that, you know, that, that local network that's within the store. Uh, so you, that frees you to be mobile and to be on the road or away from the store, um, again, or, or from headquarters. Um, so we're, we're not limiting this, you know, in, entirely just to store systems uh, in the future either. Um, so this is kind of the, the forward-looking goal, though. Um, so when we talk about the scope of where we can get to within this release, uh, it's going to be scaled back quite a bit. Um, so initially, we you know we wanted to be able to do some consumer scenarios and some consumer apps as well. Uh, in this case, we're fo we're focusing really only on the in-store pieces. Uh, but our but our overall goals and our overall vision is to bring um, consumer scenarios and consumer apps into play as well. So with this, I'm going to turn it over to Yavin, and he's going to talk a bit about um, about the components uh, that make up the, the solution that enable these scenarios. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Um, as Jeff mentioned, um, the retail team, Dynamics Retail, we are on our uh, um, plan to deliver more and more capabilities for the OMI channel. We start from the store, then we go to the web, now mobile. And since the last release, which is AX 2012R2, we delivered the web component, which has enabled people to do e-commerce. You probably remember the, more, the most important component within that web module is something called the commerce runtime. So commerce runtime is the business engine behind the, the online store, which is the power all the business capabilities and business processes, business calculations needed it for the online store. So in this release, we continue enhancing the commerce runtime for additional capabilities to be able to support the brick and mortar stores. And then we take this commerce runtime, embedded it into the, uh, something called retail server that provided us the, the capabilities to the store. So that said, um, the, you, when you think about the architecture, it changed from a traditional two-tier, which is you have a POS application connecting to a database, which is the store database, to a three-tier uh, architecture plan. Then you have the middle tier, which is really the, the retail server with, with a commerce runtime embedded, then the database. The commerce runtime retail server it's really here to support all next generation clients. Any business calculations will be supported by that. The benefit also, when you think about that with the commerce runtime embedded into the retail server, also embedded to the online e-commerce stories, is really the true OMI channel. One integration or one implementation for anything can be used across channel without modification. The second piece of the retail server and commerce runtime really going to support is something called device management. So device down here are talking about all different type uh, form, uh, form factors. You can have the device uh, activated and deactivated, all managed centrally by AX inside AX uh, headquarter. Another piece of down here support is really retail server. It supports offline caching capability. This is to address uh, some of the specific uh, requirements for certain industry. For example, they might have to go full offline and for a single register and in, the, in case they got disconnected from the internet. Um, can we go to the next slide? So what exactly retail server is? How, what roles it play in the store? So, you can see in, in this box down here. So assuming that's a physical store, that's a brick and mortar store. There, on the left side, you can see there's a gray box, the, the one we call the enterprise POS. 
the enterprise POS is the one we shipped traditionally in R2 in any other future releases. And uh, the, in the previous releases, and plus in the future releases, we continue to support this enterprise POS. That's still our bread and butter. That wouldn't change. The enterprise pod will need to be, uh, will be able to run on different operating systems, whatever the supported platform, such as Windows 7, um, POS Ready 7, POS Ready 2009. We will continue to su support that with this enterprise pod. This is the the typical uh, case on the two tier. So you have application, you use ADO .NET to connect to the database. The customization model on that still will be the same. You have the operation managers and to connect to the different services. You have the POS plugins over there to continue to be able to enhance and add additional capabilities, such as if you want to override a test calculation, the same interface will continue to be supported. That didn't change. On the right-hand side, there are three boxes. One box called the POS register, uh, VNX POS, and with a SYN deployment. And the far right hand side is the, the one VNX POS with a SIG deployment. And the bottom one is the retail server. So think this is the case. Um, in your store, um, besides the enterprise pods, you will have a retail server deployed to a box, to some machine. You can have one machine deployed with retail server, uh, or you can load balance uh, multiple retail servers. And then your mobile client, your mobile devices, such as Surface RT or Windows Phone, is connecting to such uh, retail server over HTTPS, over Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi connectivity you have in the store to connect to this in-store retail server for any uh, business transactions. You can use that to, um, to uh, you know, uh, selling products or, you know, uh, do returns and any other scenarios we support, just like the enterprise pods. The user perspective, when you look at that, they're virtually the same. So instead, you have an enterprise pods, you know, connect to hardware in a fixed station. Now you can carry a device, and then that device is connected to some business, you know, uh, uh, services within the store over Wi-Fi. So that enables you uh, really have a mobility clientele within the store to better you know, uh, um, you know, help your customer. So when you look at here, how are you going to extend this model, this business, you know, this is new architecture, three tier? Indeed, in this is not really, really new. This is the beginning. You know, uh, the three-tier architecture is in the, the industry for 20 plus years. And an aspect on that is when you think about the, the extensibility, indeed, comparing to the enterprise paths, now you have a two areas you can uh, um, extend. One for sure is the retail server. So in the past, you want to continue enhancing the uh, um, the tax calculation because there might be different tax you know regulations in different um, country. Same thing you can do that within the retail store by extending the commerce runtime. For people in the past attending uh, you know the the retail tech conference training, we're going through the retail store. The same retail uh, going through the commerce runtime within the commerce runtime. They have different layers of architecture there. One layer is the services layer. That services layer is equivalent to the enterprise uh, POS services layer. There are different interfaces being defined, some for task calculation, price calculation, and shaping, and take a payment. All these are defined within um, the, the commerce runtime. Again, I want to mention the Commerce Runtime module within this retail server is the same exact module you used on the online store. Let's talk about the extensibility on the client side. The client, which is really the app running on the device, and we also provide extensibility um, you know, on this level. 
the technology, the underlying technology, actually we changed from a traditional C sharp application to this the the new technology called HTML5 plus JavaScript. With HTML5 and JavaScript, the extensibility mod, uh, customization become even more easier because. As part of shipping the code, shipping the, the, the binaries, the code is also come with it. Additional forms, add additional you know, uh, business operations, add additional calls to the retail server to fulfill any uh, you know, um, business processes. The client also have a local cache. The cache actually gonna provide you with a better performance and better use, usability, and lots of things can be cached over there for things don't really change much, and uh, that can be cached locally. Then you can have that cell phone to, uh, you know, or the mobile devices have a better user experience. This is actually fairly important when you think about it. And if you use in the store, it's a Wi-Fi, so you don't pay a whole lot of fees across the wire. But when you really go into the cloud, that will be a different story. So Jeff, can you go to the next slide? We talk about the cloud. So the previous slide, when you think about it, you have an uh, organization, uh, you have a, like 1,000 stores, right? You have to physically deploy the softwares and into the physical store. You have to maintain that physical stores. And that actually is very, very difficult and very costly. With commerce runtime with retail server, all enable you is the next step to do this centralized hosting. So when you look at the diagram here, there are two boxes. And on the left is still your brick and mortar store. On the right hand side is what we call cloud. So this cloud could be a public cloud, could be a private cloud. It could be, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Microsoft Azure. You can, you know, also leverage Microsoft Azure. In the next release, we probably wouldn't be able to get into the Microsoft Azure, but that's on our roadmap. So, cloud. So in the cloud, let's say you have a, let's put this in here, you have 1,000 stores. Uh, um, they, they're on West Coast, East Coast, and everywhere. West. Say, hey, for really low balancing the, the, the request, I'm going to have two data center. One data center on the west coast, one data center in the east coast. I will need to ho I will host all my stores in these two data center. Within one data center, there are two components when you think about it. Again, there's a retail server with a CRT embedded. There's a database. So instead, you have one database, one retail server. You will have a many, many retail server. The different retail server instance, they are really stateless. They are running instance. To um, handle the seasonality, you can have one retail server there or many retail servers. This is because they are identical. You can deploy as many as you want. And then the database, you can have one database, you can have many database, and you can put one database on one store in one database, or you can put many stores in one database, you really start pulling all your resources in one centralized location. And look at in the store. What left in the store is just the, the presentation, it's the device. So you have the, the, the new device, which is connected to the data center through Wi-Fi, through HTTP, uh, HTTPS, basically going through the web. So your store becoming much simpler. So let's imagine this is a scenario. Mm -hmm. um, open the store in New York, Times Square, the pop-up store, just temporarily run the location for you know months or so. Instead, you're sending all the devices, all the hardware's database to that to that store. What you do is 
you cashier are going to carry their own device, which they already have. They, the devices that have the app already, you know, uh, in store, they're using for, you know, uh, other stores. And then you do is in AX, the headquarter, you configure a new store record. Then you push data down to the data center. Then you can shares take their device to say, now I connect it to you as that pop-up store, that register. You can go into that New York store immediately to make it sell and start doing the, you know, the, the, the regular business without any IT investment. It becoming much robust, much simpler. I guess I can talk about this for, you know, uh, one or two hours, but, you know, in terms of timing, and, uh, um, you know, I will stop here and hand it back to uh, uh, Jeff to talk about the, the client. Thanks, Jevin. You know, we'll, we'll make sure that we have time for, at the end for Q&A also. So if, uh, if people have questions about um, especially the, the various components uh, and the different deployment options that Yabin's called out, then uh, we can take questions then. Uh, so moving on, um, we'll talk about the, the clients themselves. Uh, so we talk about um, different, different devices, and that can mean different form factors from a phone to a tablet to, you know, a you know, full-size PC um, to uh, different platforms, different operating systems. Um, so uh, that means, basically, it means Windows, uh, iOS, and Android. Um, uh, these are basically, um, you know, kind of listed out in our, in our um, priority order at this point. Uh, and then a couple of distinctions here um, is that the, the Windows platform, the Microsoft platform stuff, um, will be considered kind of out of the box ready to deploy, um, meaning that it's a you know it's it's a ready to use app. Um, it'll be deployed. Um, you know, obviously it can be um, you know side loaded in a dev environment uh, or pushed out through some, um, you know kind of the, the corporate marketplace or the corporate store um, to be able to load them onto devices. Um, but they're basically ready to go at that point. Um, the the non-Microsoft platforms um, uh, are, we're, for lack of a better term, we're calling reference apps. Um, so for all of them, whether it's the, the Microsoft or the non-Microsoft, uh, all of the source code will be provided um, for creation purposes, for extensibility purposes. Um, the reference apps, on the other hand, um, you know, they, they'll basically need to be, um, to be fleshed out and, and more tailor-made uh, for the particular retailer. Uh, so the, the Microsoft apps will have more configuration capabilities. Um, so from within AX, um, being able to, to configure them uh, to a greater level of detail that would require less coding, uh, whereas the non-Windows or the non-Microsoft platforms, uh, to do that, it would, it would at least at this point for this release, uh, it, will, it will require more coding. Um, but for all of them, um, all, of the, all of the source code will be provided. Um, on the non-Windows side, um, the iPad is listed above the iPhone and Android, um, purely from a prioritization perspective. Um, so we're actually we're targeting all of them, um, but from a from a um, from a priority perspective, uh, we've put iPad first. The reality is, it's there's a lot of shared code there across them um, from the implement from the uh, the approach that we're taking for implementation. Um, and, but there is additional overhead, say for styling. Uh, and for um, some native support for for um, peripherals like scanners and and uh, and uh, and interacting with other devices, uh, card swipe readers. Um, so there is some uh, differentiating work between the different platforms, um, um, but largely the the code is shared across them. Um, so that's obviously going to lower our you know our cost to be able to deliver those solutions. Um, but um, from a commitment perspective, um, the iPad is ahead of, say, the iPhone or Android. Um, but in reality, we're targeting all of them, um, and 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 we'll continue to invest in all of these um, in in future releases. This was one way for us to be able to scope to what can fit in this release. Uh, so when we talk about um, the, the again, I'll stress targeted scope. Um, you'll see that um, from a uh, feature perspective or from a scenario perspective, not all of the clients will be equal. Uh, so basically the Windows 8 app is the is more or less the showcase app uh, that will go the deepest um, and it'll be the most full-featured. 
um, with uh, with the Windows Phone and any of the non Microsoft platforms following that. Um, I'll take a minute to explain a bit about what each of these scenarios are. Um, so simple sale is is basically um, you know the the bare bones of what uh, a point of sale uh, would need to be able to do, uh, which is you know uh, selling products. Um, we're only supporting uh, paying by cash and credit card. Um, you can add a customer and create a customer, um, but that's pretty much about it. Uh, that would be covered within simple sale. Um, very limited device support. Um, uh, it, it's really um, the the work effort that goes into this one is more around the framework of actually being able to um, to to have the apps with the um, talking to the server, um, the shell or the you know the framework for the UI and all the interactions. Um, simple sale is kind of the bare bones functionality uh, that that it will utilize that and that everything else can be built on top of. Complex sale again, not not the greatest name. But it's everything else, <laughs> everything else um, from your, you know, your your general point of sale um, selling aspect of things. So this is going to be, um, you know, everything from discounts to um, to to tax overrides to uh, serialized items, um, um, gift certificates, uh, loyalty, um, you name it. Everything else um, that would be supported within the the uh, the existing point of sale client or what we're calling the enterprise client. Uh, that isn't covered in the simple sale um, is is covered in complex sale, um, and returns um, is was called out separately, um, but basically returns includes um, manual return, um, returning from a, an existing transaction or recalling one from a scanning a receipt, as well as doing exchanges. Um, daily operations are mainly the drawer operations of you know shift shift management, opening shifts, resuming shifts. Um, your your uh, starting amounts, your float entries, bank drop, safe drop, uh, closing your shift, as well as some things like um, time time clock entries and and um, and and stuff like that would be covered under daily operations. Uh, customer orders is the ability to do special orders, um, so taking a deposit uh, for an order to be fulfilled at a later time or at a different location or have it shipped to you. Um, so customer orders uh, was broken out into its own scenario group. Um, product comparison um, and clienteling both um, are where we can start taking better advantage of the fact that these are mobile, next-gen, richer, uh, richer experience clients. Uh, and this is where we can uh, uptake the rich catalog information that we've introduced in the last release for online and bringing that into the store. Um, so basically, product comparison is uh, you know, multimedia for products, whether it be images or videos. Uh, it's product specifications and attributes, um, and it's being able to uh, refine searches. Um, so looking for things within a price range uh, or with specific attributes, say a certain amount of memory or a number of megapixels or something like that, uh, and the ability to compare products. So selecting you know, a, a few different products and comparing them side by side. Um, and that rolls into clienteling, uh, which is uh, the other side of that where you know, rather than being behind a cash wrap and the, um, you know, the cashier alone sees that point of sale screen, um, the, the trends are and what we're envisioning are these mobile devices being out on the sales floor working with the, con with the consumer or with the, the customer. Um, so, so doing a product comparison with them um, right there out on the sales floor and giving them additional uh, information. And the client telling piece would be uh, more information about that customer kind of at the the fingertips of that of the of the cashier or the salesperson that's out on that sales floor with them, uh, so very easy access to their to their personal information, their contact information, uh, as well as uh, purchase history, recent purchases, um, uh, wish list capabilities, preferences, that kind of stuff. Um, being able to to surface that within these apps out on the sales floor. Uh, store inventory is probably the thing that. Um, that retailers have been using mobile devices for the longest. Um, people have been using handheld data collectors and mobile devices for inventory for a very, very long time. Um, so perfectly makes sense to be able to do that with these new clients also. Uh, this would be picking, receiving, counting initially, and then we can 
you know, we can continue to improve on that um, for, you know, label printing or price checks or even um, um, some ordering capabilities in future releases. Uh, Role-based layouts is kind of the big ticket item. Um, and this is uh, the ability to do all of the configuration versus customization and to do that at a role at a role based um, level. So if you think of our of our enterprise client today, the ability to have different screen layouts um, per register, per store, per user, um, and being able to uh, really define what's on the screen, what it looks like, and how it's going to interact is all con uh, covered within the role based layout section. So that brings us to actually what's in CTP one. Oops, I think I might have clicked twice. Um, so the, um, the, the two scenarios that we've enabled in CTP1 are simple sale and returns, which from a functional perspective is very limited. We understand that. Um, but you have to understand all of the work that goes behind the scenes and being able to even surface up these two kind of limited scenarios. Uh, so all of the retail server work that Yavin talked about, um, all of the architecture and framework aspect from, from these different clients, um, and the fact that we've done multiple clients um, kind of uh, just to speak to the amount of effort that goes in um, to even just enabling these couple scenarios. Um, but at this point, we feel like we have a good foundation to be able to deliver on the additional scenarios, you know, post CTP1 um, as we move uh, towards, the, towards the, the release of this feature pack. Um, but just a, as a quick rundown, and you'll see this in the demo of what's actually in simple sale and returns. Uh, we have very basic logon capability. Um, so you actually can log in with real um, cashier credentials, um, cashiers that are assigned to that store. Uh, all of that works. We actually don't have log out. <laughs> so, um, so you'd actually have to close the app and start it again to switch users, um, understanding that that's not you know, a, a real world scenario, but it's just where we happen to be now. Um, um, as far as what um, permissions are available, so the framework for permissions is there, the implementation is there. Uh, we haven't really surfaced it very much in the tasks that are available. There's just not a whole lot that we're actually doing within the clients at this point that'll take advantage of permissions. Um, but the, the plumbing for permissions is, is all available already. Um, so uh, search capabilities, so being able to search across customers and products. Um, being able to browse for products. Um, this is using um, the national hierarchies to be able to drill down through categories to find products in a, vis in a very visual way. Uh, works very well when we start talking about the product comparisons and the clientele scenarios. Um, we did do variant selection. Um, so if you select a product master and you need to choose its size, color, style, configuration, um, those flows have been implemented. Uh, I did mention that we only implemented cash and credit card transactions, um, uh, payment methods for the transactions. Uh, and even that is limited in that um, it's only for the exact amount. Um, so even being able, so uh, we don't support split tendering or multi-tendering yet, um, but you can actually can't even over tender. Um, it's only gonna tender for the exact amount at this point. Uh, we do have the, the plumbing for email and print receipt uh, in place. In, in the demo, you'll see some of the UI flows around that. Um, based on a limited configuration, but that'll continue to be enhanced as we go through into complex sale. Uh, limited peripheral support. So um, we've done some, um, with the, with the non-Microsoft clients, we've done some specific integrations um, for, some, uh, for some devices, um, you know, uh, pin pad, MSR, uh, scanner. Um, we've also, obviously, we can support, say, uh, keyboard wedge devices uh, if you're using, say, the Windows 8 client on a, on a PC. Um, and then um, uh, the, the, the concept of a hardware station um, it has been introduced in this, in this release, but will be, um, again, built on as we move beyond CTB1 um, towards the release of the feature pack. But hardware station, which is really... Um, uh, kind of a, of a role of a, of a retail server, uh, which allows you to um, hook up a bunch of devices to a, to a PC within the store and then share those devices across all of these different clients. Um, so um, what that will allow you to do is to have you know, a pay station. Um, so you can have a, a, a cash drawer that maybe three or four different mobile clients use or a printer or a set of printers that are used across all of the different clients. Um, and being able to support, you know, traditional point of sale 
um, peripherals that way using using um, you know OPOS um, for example. Um, so uh, so the 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 concept of the hardware station has been introduced at this point, but at a very limited level. Uh, and then returns we talked about. Um, uh, being able to do a manual return uh, as, and exchanges, as well as being able to return by receipt. And again, kind of another example of where more plumbing has been done than actually surfaced uh, is around reason codes. Uh, so the majority of reason codes and the ability to actually configure and do different types of reason codes will come in complex sale. Um, but a lot of the plumbing is in place and the basic flows for return reason codes uh, have been introduced in CTP1. Um, so with that, I'll uh, I'll skip ahead into the demo now, um, and hopefully we still have some time for questions at the end. Uh, so we'll start off with the with the Windows 8 um, app. So I'm running it in the emulator um, from Visual Studio, um, but um, these can be obviously we deploy these on our surfaces um, as well. Uh, so as the app starts up, um, this this device has actually already been activated. Yabin talked about activation, um, but this device already knows which store it, it's a member of and which register it is. Uh, I can go ahead and log in. Um, the app is it's it's pretty bare bones um, from a functionality perspective as well as visually. Um, so um, if you think of it, think of it as, as it not being themed at all versus any actual kind of theme. Um, um, some of the, the branding or the, the color schemes or whatnot are all very temporary. Um, um, and if you've seen, say, the, the app that we demoed at NRF, uh, it's largely just borrowed from that at this point. Um, but as we move forward, this will all get fleshed out um, into a, a much richer, more compelling experience. Um, but from here, this would be... Uh, a very basic idea of this particular user's welcome screen or start screen, uh, and these would be role-based. Um, we also uh, uh, plan for this to be uh, panoramic, uh, so I could scroll to the right and get to additional tasks, um, maybe get some BI if I'm a manager, um, and quickly see uh, you know, how my store is doing or how my, my cashiers are doing for the day, um, some notification kind of um, um, uh, implementation, like a almost like a, a dashboard here as they log in. Um, um, but again, at this point, it's it's pretty limited as, as what's available. Um, I'll go ahead and click uh, start a new sale, and we'll come into the main point of sale screen. At this point in CTP1, this is hard coded, um, so this this doesn't respect any till layouts that can be configured within AX, but that's within scope in in uh, in beyond CTP1. Um, so you'll you'll recognize, you know, at this point, it, it pretty much mimics our, our sample layout that we have for Enterprise Paws, um, but there are some key differences um, in that, um, for example, the the products and payments um, in Enterprise Paws is a are tables that the the payment lines uh, will appear under the products um, as needed, uh, and depending on your layout, um, there's often not enough real estate for that. Uh, so what we've done here is we've kind of made it a pivot, um, being able to view um, your your line items, so the products that are being sold, and any partial payments lines that might be on that. Um, um, the 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 button grid over on the side has obviously has a tile appearance for Windows 8. Um, again, these will be customizable um, in the future. Uh, but we'll we'll move through a, a a couple basic transactions to get an idea of how it works. Um, the input field um, still allows you to enter. Uh, search strings. Um, so I'll go ahead and enter an item number, and it'll perform a search. An issue with CTP1 actually is that we're actually showing the product masters as well as the individual variants um, in this search. So um, ideally, this would have found a single product and added that product to the transaction, but it's actually finding all of the different variant combinations for this as well. So uh, if I choose this one, it will actually add it to the sale, um, and it'll know that it was the white laptop. Um, if I choose the top one, uh, we don't know which variant it is, so you'll actually get prompted to choose. Oh. <laughs> At least yesterday. <laughs> yesterday you did. So in this case, it's adding the product without knowing which variant it is, which is obviously a, a code defect. Um, but uh, typically, you would, you would get prompted to choose you know, the size, color, style, configuration in that case. Um, so that'll be um, 
one difference, you know, say in CTP one and, and beyond. Um, so we're showing the the, the original price. Um, in this case, this product is being discounted. So um, the original price is, is, is uh, shown as strike through with the, the actual sale price um, being listed um, normally. I can then uh, add a customer to the transaction. Um, so I can do a customer search. It'll go back and find any of the customers uh, with Contoso in their name, and our test data has quite a few of those. I can add this customer to the transaction, or I could choose to create a new customer. Um, so creating a customer uh, works within CTP1. Um, right now, actually, it's requiring address all address fields to be filled out. Um, that will be addressed. Um, but for right now, everything needs to be filled out. Um, I'll save us the time and just go ahead and add an existing customer. Add that customer to the sale. And now I can go ahead and tender. Uh, so we use the, the app bar that's common with, um, with Windows 8 apps. Um, so you can always swipe up to be able to get to additional uh, tasks. Uh, as well as navigation. So at this point, I could navigate into the catalog, or I could uh, navigate home. Um, in fact, actually, I'll do that. I'll, I'll browse into the catalog, and this will show the, the product browsing capabilities. Um, so we don't have images hooked up in the, in the test data yet, um, but you can have category images. Uh, if I drill down into a category, uh, we can view uh, product images as well. Uh, in fact, a, a different server that I have has images configured, so we'll be able to see those when we get into the, the iOS client. Uh, but here I can go ahead and I can select uh, a couple different products. Um, so we have multiple, multiple select enabled. Um, you can change views to view this within a list view, um, a small card view, uh, or a large card view to be able to, to view, um, either fit more on the screen or view additional information and add these to the sale. Now here, the, the variant selection is working. Uh, so in this case, it needs to know which color laptop I want. I'll choose a blue one for that one, a red one for the next one, and black for the final one. Those products will get added to that uh, transaction that I had started before. And now I'll go ahead and complete this sale. Uh, the payment methods that are configured for this store uh, appear here. For CTP1, again, it's just cash. Uh, exact amount will work. Uh, as well as card. Um, so I'll actually go ahead and show a card payment here. So uh, if I had a keyboard wedge uh, MagStripe reader, I could swipe that here, or I could choose to do this manually. I'll enter in my test card information once. Actually, I think I need, hold on, let me do that again. There we go. And I'll pay for this with my card, um, signature capture with my finger, and then I can accept this payment. Uh, so what you'll see next um, in the CTP1 release uh, isn't really configurable. I mean, it is, but we don't surface um, any of the configuration. Um, but what you'll see next is kind of your receipt options. Oh, actually, maybe I got the card number wrong. Let me just, I'll go quicker and uh, pay for this by cash. Uh, uh, one thing is you can use the, the app bar to get into pay, uh, or you can just touch the total. Um, and for speed purposes, I'll just choose exact amount uh, so we can get into some of the other clients. Um, what you're about to see once this transaction posts uh, is some email and printing options. So this will ultimately be configured as to whether this happens all the time or on demand. Um, in this case, I have a customer selected, and we know their email address, but I could change that to a different email address if I wanted to. Uh, and then I can choose to send or not send. Again, this can be configurable to either prompt or not prompt, or always do it or never do it. Uh, so I'll choose to send that email. Uh, and then next will be for printing options. So again, you can always print, you can prompt to print, or you can select which printer you want to print to. Um, in this case, there's one printer configured, and I can choose to print to it or not. Um, uh, this is this is kind of a the basic implementation of this, and this will get fleshed out beyond CTP1 also. Uh, so I've basically done a, a, a basic transaction uh, in the Windows 8 client. Uh, just to show returns pretty quickly, um, I'll do a manual return. So I'll add a, a product to the transaction, and I can select this line 
and choose to return it. We can actually do multi-select here as well. So if you wanted to return multiple lines, uh, you can select multiple in the grid. Uh, and then you can choose the reason code. Uh, it's the wrong size laptop. And now you can perform a return as well. There you go. That one went through much faster. Um, so uh, I'll move on and show uh, additional clients now. Um, so the next one I'll show will be uh, Windows Phone. Uh, so this is the Windows Phone app. Um, running in the emulator as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and log into this one. This one's also already been activated, um, but there's a, a code defect where it's not showing the store, um, but it has been activated and it's associated to store one. Uh, I'll go ahead and log into this one. Uh, the phone client also has the concept of the welcome screen, and it's, uh, it'll be obviously scaled back from what we can fit within the, the full client. Um, but the welcome screen would, would basically be, um, you know, shortcuts to the different tasks um, that this particular user will be able to, to access. And uh, the thought there is that, that that's also uh, role-based. So managers logging in would get different uh, options than, than cashiers. There we go. Took a while to log in there. Um, so this would be um, this particular user's uh, welcome screen. Uh, from here, I can go in and, and start a sale here as well. Um, so we'll try to keep some of the same design patterns and UI concepts and interactions across the clients, um, but yet keeping them true to their kind of uh, their native um, design patterns, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so we want consistency, so a user can go from one device to the next. Um, but also we want it to look like a Windows Phone app or we want it to look like an iOS app. Um, so you'll see some, some differences in the styling. Uh, here I can go ahead and, and I can add a product. I can search or I can drill down. Um, so we have the same kind of catalog browsing capabilities um, on the phone as we do in the, in, the, uh, in the Windows app. It's going quite a bit slower than it did when I was practicing the demo. Maybe I'll just do a search. Ah, OK, so it looks like I have some server. Oh, there we go. Uh, some issues here, obviously. Uh, I can go ahead and add that product to the transaction. Uh, I can view the details of this product. If there was a product image, you would see that here. Um, you can change how many you want to buy. Uh, you could void the line or return the line here. Um, I can add a customer. Um, so here I could create a new customer, or I could search for an existing customer. Go ahead and add this customer. There's their information. Uh, and then I can move on into checkout. So I can go ahead and add payment lines to this. Uh, in this case, I'll pay cash, and I'll pay the full amount. And then similarly, I'll get my email and print options before I complete that sale. I want to leave a, at least a little bit of time for questions, so I'm going to quickly move into the non-Windows clients. Um, this one's gone to sleep as well. OK, so this is an, in a simulator as well. Um, but this would be the iPad client. Um, so in this case, I've already logged in. Um, so I can move in and start a new sales transaction. Uh, I can search for products. So if I know I want my SP101 uh, laptop here, I can add this to the transaction. Um, here we have some images set up. Um, so in this case, you can view the images of the product. Is looking at some of those attributes that have been defined uh, within its catalog. Uh, and I can go ahead and add this to the sale. Uh, you can also browse for products. I'll come down here into the catalog. Uh, in this case, I can browse through my different categories. Um, so we don't have images for all of the categories. Um, but if I go back into that laptops category, I can browse for products um, in a drill down or, or almost like a tree uh, approach. Uh, within this client also. Uh, 
and I'll add this one. And then I can add a customer to the transaction. So I can search for a customer, or I could create a new customer. It shows the customer has been added here. Um, or you can view the customer information on this tab up here. And then I can complete the sale. So here I'll choose cash also. And as I mentioned before, for CTP1, we only support um, the exact amount. And I can apply that. And in this case, I think this machine is set up to, um, um, to have um, a printer as well. Um, so here you could choose to email or not, um, and then to print or not. In this case, I think printing is mandatory. So that'll go and print a receipt in someone's office. Uh, so with that, we have a few minutes left over for questions. We can uh, check the, the IM window. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jeff and Yabin. So um, as you guys know, please feel free to go ahead and IM your question if you'd like, or feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask your question live and in person. We do have a few uh, questions that came in throughout the presentation, so thank you for um, submitting them so you didn't forget them. Uh, the first one was, are the architecture diagrams going to be available on TechNet? And this one came in during Yavin's um, discussion. So yes, we will make sure that um, the diagrams that were visible through the PowerPoint slide are a little easier to read. Um, so we'll make sure and get that updated on the Connect site. Um, we won't be putting them on TechNet right away just because this is uh, pre-release. So anything that we upload will be uploaded on the Connect site. Um, a next question was, what is the expected CTP1 date? And um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Prabhu or anyone else, but the targeted date for that is next week. And again, that will be available on the Connect site. Um, all of you guys should have received the link to the Connect page. And I will have a pointer to it as well on our Yammer site. So that way you can easily just go right to the download. Um, another question came in, and uh, Jeff, I believe this one is for you. Will functionality like price check be ready for the future pack release in Q4 or releases beyond that? So that one's currently, tar it's targeted for this release, for this feature pack, uh, and it would be considered as, um, I believe it was one of the daily operations. Um, you know, we the, the, the scope of functionality that we have is pretty broad. It's hard to just bucketize this into into these scenarios. Uh, so it's it's always, it's kind of hard to determine which ones and where. Uh, but I believe yeah, yeah we do have you know uh, price check has been spec'd out and we have wireframes for it. It's not in CTP one, but yes, it's in, in scope for this release. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, another question here: How much will the retail servers add to the total budget, on average, for a for an AX customer implementing with about 100 retail stores? So uh, this is a question for uh, Michael Griffin, and uh, uh, we are in the R&D, cannot answer this question. Sorry. Yeah, so we could take a follow-up action item for you on that, Ludwig. Uh, the next question, um, supplementary categories, are they also supported for browsing? Yeah, so um, so the way that the category um, categories work uh, by utilizing the category framework is that a single category um, hierarchy can be have multiple purposes. Um, the the way that it's implemented now is that we use a category with the purpose of navigational hierarchy, um, but that could be uh, the same hierarchy that's also used for supplemental hierarchy. Um, so the framework is all the same, kind of the the structure of the category hierarchy. Um, is going to be the same, whether it's supplemental or navigational or your main retail product hierarchy. Um, but there's a specific type for navigational hierarchy um, that we use for this. Great. Any other questions? I don't see anyone typing. We'll wait. Oh, we have someone typing here. That was just a quick thank you for our Yammer invite. So we'll go ahead and see if there's anyone else that has any more questions. And also, please feel free to unmute yourself, too, if you'd like to ask your question um, in person. Oh. 
Okay, well, seeing um, no more typing and seeing that no one has um, muted themselves, um, we will go ahead and wrap up for today. So I will go ahead and stop the recording now.